What's happening, everybody? Trey here, joined by my dad, Sean, and today, Reactions to the Classics, we're going to be uh, drafting our favorite albums from the 1970s, and uh, woo, talk about a tough task right this here, was Dad. a really tough task. We're each uh, going to be drafting 10 records apiece. I get first pick uh, this year, so, you know, just go one, two, three, four, all that, yep. all that good stuff, man, and uh, so many great records uh, on both our list, and so many records uh, are on the outside looking in. Doesn't mean they aren't great, just... Uh, it's tough when you can only choose 20. It's it's very tough. And guys, if, if you haven't been following along with this, is the first time you're watching. We did year by year. So go back and check that out. I'll link them below. I'll also link all the albums that we've reviewed or reacted to below that is in this list. So that's going to give you you boys and girls hours, actually, of, mm -hmm. of watching time. But we started out in 1965. We're going all the way through the current year that we're in right now, 2022. But um, pay attention. We want to know your 10 favorite albums at the end. That might take you a while to compile. Trust me, it will. And we also want to know who you think won. Although on these lists, I don't think there's a winner or a yeah. loser. They're just all fantastic. So Trey, you got first pick. Kick it off. Man. Yeah, man. Uh, so many great albums Dude. that uh, it was tough to narrow down. But I'm going to go for one that's in contention for me for best album of all time. It's going to be Pink Floyd's. Wish You Were Here. I know, I love it, man. I love the pause. <laughs> People were wondering, well, which, which Floyd? Which Floyd are you going? I'm going Wish You Were Here. I think it's their best record from uh, I agree. 75, man. Obviously, you have uh, Shine On You, Crazy Diamond, which a book ends the record as just an epic, uh, you know, progressive type of track yeah. that uh, it, there's just not a, a note wasted on this entire record. Uh, have as a Cigar uh, is really uh, fantastic, too. And, of course, the title track, Dad, which I know is one of your favorite songs of all probably time. Probably my five favorite songs of all time. Yeah, just a uh, fantastic song choice so it, it has a little bit of everything uh in this and you know i think gilmore and, and waters really you know at this point the the tension hadn't really built up yet so they're still firing on all cylinders uh together as well so shout out to floyd they're uh you know gonna appear on uh one of our list again <laughs> you can count on that you can count on that all right trey they're not gonna appear yet though which is what people <laughs> might think but i've got to go with the man the boss he's looking he's, he's looking at the magnum opus man for him Born to Run, just fantastic. Love Third it, studio man. album. It was Do or Die, if you don't know the story <laughs> behind it. Do or Die, man. It was his last album on his Columbia deal, and they were going to release him, man, and mm -hmm. that would have been it. But uh, he made it work. Not only the title track, obviously, but 10th Avenue, Freeze Out, is mm -hmm. fantastic. And there was the only two singles, but title track took six months to record. Uh, you got Thunder Road. You got the epic closer, Jungle Land. Yeah, Jungle Land always been one of my favorites, especially when those, uh, the, those keys get those going. Keys. But there's only eight songs. And I think they're all great. So oh, yeah. that was going to be my first pick. No, man, can't uh, can't go wrong with that. And I'm going now to a double record. Uh, the album that uh, everybody from Prince and Elton John has is called the best album ever. We're yeah. going Stevie Wonder, Songs in the Key of Life, uh, one for the Grammy album of the year. Um, I mean, you have Village Ghetto Land, you have I Wish, you have Isn't She Lovely, As. I mean, there's so much on this. Sir Duke. Yeah, that's right, man. You you, you have Stevie just going yeah. into so many different types of genres of music, just showing his expertise, playing uh, the instruments on almost every single song as well. I mean, his 70s run is, uh, you know, up there with anybody's in, in music history, you know, when you, you oh, yeah. get to fulfilling this as first finale and their visions this jam or this album in here too i mean uh shout out to to sir stevie wonder right there but uh, uh what do you got now my next pick rumors fleetwood mac 40 million Ooh. copies sold side one for me is a contention for top 10 best sides mm -hmm. ever secondhand news dreams never going back dreams, again baby. don't stop go your own way songbirds on there if it wasn't on there i think it would be the great and not that songbirds a bad song but those other are just mm -hmm. and you know the stories behind it i know people love the chain yeah but love that the, the stories behind it the cocaine use we have a review of it i'd suggest you watch it just because there's some very entertaining stories coming out of this and now finally trey we're going to get to the album that you picked that mm -hmm. everyone else is like why was this not number one Yes, sir. The uh, concept record to end all concept records. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So who knows how many joints have been smoked to this record in the past uh, however many One years. One or two. <laughs> we have the dark side of the moon. Of course, Pink Floyd coming in here. Um, man, we've covered this album in a podcast form. We've ranked the songs. We have a full album review, a listening you party. We, we got this one covered for you. Uh, front to back. So I won't spend too much time on it, but uh, I, I love uh, time. I love uh, money. Uh, us and them. Um, I, I think just it's so 
iconic from uh, how long it's been on the charts to how long it, uh, you know, the album cover. It's one of those that I think will continue to just be in yeah. front of new generations. Well, it has so, for 50 years, and there's no yeah. no sign of slowing down, so I agree with you. So so shout out to, to Floyd, man. What do you got now? My third pick, Mr. Bowie, Ziggy Stardust. Mm. Love this album. I think it's his best. I know opinions vary. Most people don't agree with that. They're going with Station to Station or or some something else in mm. the Berlin trilogy, but... Uh, five years just what a tremendous one of the the best uh, albums where you go openers and closers Closers, exactly and then rock and roll roll suicide suicide. starman my favorite song on here the ziggy stardust song itself Mm -hmm. soul love just just all kinds of and i think it's bowie at his absolute peak but uh you know, Hunky Dory right before this was awesome. Awesome. awfully and good. It's not going to make the list, but it's awfully good. No, yeah. And shout out to Mick Ronson on the guitar Mick, as well. Man. Uh, love that period of Bowie. And uh, I'm going now to uh, a album that's in a group we haven't really covered much. But man, these yeah. guys absolutely rock. It's Black Sabbath, Paranoid, their second record right here. Um, you know, it, just so many classics of the, that uh, kind of heavy metal uh, yeah. early days right here. Um, I also really enjoyed Planet Caravan with uh, just kind of the otherworldly effects that it has. Of course, you have War Pigs. Uh, of course, yeah. you know, you have the title track, Paranoid. You have Iron Man, um, which, you know, got a bit of a resurgence in, in Iron Man, uh, you know, the movie uh, recently. Uh, so, um, you just Bill Ward solo on Rat Salad is really good. Just heavy, memorable riffs that uh, sounds great all this time later. Yeah, I agree. That's a really good choice. Now, Trey, going to The Who. Also, their fifth studio. It was Bowie's fifth studio. Hey, yeah. We're going with Who's Next. You know, it's such a consistent album. Mm-hmm. You know, Bob O'Reilly starts it. The song is over. Getting in tune. Behind Blue Eyes. It ends with Won't Get Fooled yep. Again. You know, so another of those album starts yep. and finishes. Only nine songs. They're all fantastic, man. And one of my favorite, quote, rock albums of all oh, time. Oh, yeah, just straight rock and roll. Yeah, right now you, you picked something I was going to pick next, but you got uh, it. Yeah, this is going to be my favorite Stones record right here. It's a moving here. target for it's, me. It's uh, Sticky Fingers. Uh, this was uh, their first number one on both the U.S. and the U.K. chart. So a little little trivia right there. I mean, this is 10 songs, Dad, and every song uh, is is worthy of uh, of being on that record, man. Yeah. There's no the, all killer, no filler, as they say, man. Wild Horses, one of my favorites. Moonlight Mild, uh, Sway, I think one of the more under rated stones tunes yes i love that song um, of course you got the big hit in brown sugar uh, dead flowers as well the jamming of uh, can't you hear me knocking um keith's on fire on this whole record and what i like about it that is just the variety of sound you you get um and what you get on a lot of stones records but on sticky fingers in particular so uh had to give the nod to that yeah great great choice now gonna pivot a little bit and go to mr george harrison mm. all things must pass number one in the u.s for eight weeks in the uk for seven so more than Winnings Imagine and McCartney and Wings Band on the Run combined. Mm. Yeah, it's hard to even pick out song. You know, My Sweet Lord, Isn't It a Pity, What Is Life, Hear Me Lord, <laughs> yep. the title track. One thing we did when we, we have a two-part uh, review of this. One thing we did, Trey, is you, know, you kind of got to pretend like that third disc of intermental <laughs> the, the jams, stuff yeah. is not there if you're going to properly rate it. I'll also say, though, you know, George had many years to collect these mm-hmm. songs and just put out this masterpiece, so that's going to be... No, man, I, that's my favorite Beatles solo uh, Me record too. Of, of all time, man. So uh, I, I can't go on with that. And now we're going to, we, you know, we've kind of stuck in the early to mid part we of have. the 70s. We're going to jump to uh, the end of the 70s here, uh, go with a, a post-punk masterpiece, the debut from Joy Division, uh, unknown pleasures right here. Ian Curtis and company uh, just uh, absolutely uh, deliver uh, lyricism and, um, you know, just uh, they're known as kind of a, a depressing type of band yeah. uh, just for the atmosphere that they uh, go go in. Uh, New Dawn Fades is one of my favorites in that regard. She's Lost Control, uh, Disorder, The Opener, um, you know, Peter Hook, some of the best bass work of the decade. And uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm a big fan of Joy Division. So I uh, had to give them some love right there. Yeah, well, next up, I know some people wondering where this is at. They're still wondering where, yeah, but here we are. Marvin Gaye, What's Going yep. On? Rolling Stone on their newest list called this the greatest album ever. I wouldn't go that far, but it is iconic. Mm-hmm. The title track, Mercy, Mercy Me. You know, it's a concept album, great story behind it. It's Barry Gordy hated it. Um, and then he was kind of a, it's a long story, but he was persuaded, Barry, what Marvin self-produced the album. So you just have a, uh, 
Every song seamlessly goes into the next. I was gonna. Song. That's what I was gonna say. Some of the it's best just, transitions of of you know from song to song on any record ever, in my opinion. Yeah, and we got a nice review of this up where we you know talk about Perry Cordy when to play or uh, Barry, Marvin Gaye when to play wide receiver for the Detroit that's Lions. Right. So go watch that one. But man, Marvin, fantastic stuff. No man, can't argue with that. And uh, I'm gonna go now with a debut record from great uh, choice. television, Marky Moon. Um, man. Title track, one of the best songs of all time. Uh, ten minute epic right here. Uh, you have Torn Curtain, Elevation, She, uh, See No Evil. I mean, the, every song on this is just uh, is, is meant to be there. So influential, you know, it's categorized as uh, kind of like a, a more artsy type of punk mm-hmm. record. But uh, some of the best guitar work, uh, you know, I've, I've heard on a record is, is on this. So uh, if you've never listened to it, I know it's not maybe that iconic status that some of these other records have. Uh, go, go and seek it out, man. Yeah, I highly recommend it. Next up for me, this man's best album, in my opinion. And Same most, here. Most of you will disagree with this. The first album we ever reviewed on RTT. That's so right. If you click on that video, you're going to be a little <laughs> shocked, but you know what? It's great. It's, it's video number one. Off the Wall, mm-hmm. Michael Jackson, fifth studio album. First one produced by Quincy Jones. I think that's going to work out well for them. That pairing I, I think on. so. <laughs> Went to three in the U.S. Five singles released from the album. Number one, Don't Stop So You Get Enough and Rock With You. Mm. Okay, Both went to number one. Then you've got Off the Wall, She's Out of My Life, yep. reaching the top ten. What is the, a pained, emotional, vocal performance in that song? He became the first solo artist to have four singles from the same album, yeah. reach the top ten of the Billboard Oof. Hot 100. Now, try to think on his next album. I can't remember the name of it. I think he might top that with seven, but that's a ways down the line. No, man. Uh, the best disco album I've ever heard. Yeah, it's so, fantastic. Uh, I, I can't go wrong with that, and I can't go wrong with this next pick right here. Uh, which one was I going to choose from this group? I landed on Led Zeppelin four right there uh the best zep record in my estimation only eight songs of course yeah. you have stairway to heaven um when the levee breaks the closer uh one of my favorite john bonham drum performances uh you strip it back a little bit with uh, uh battle of evermore going to california i love going um, to california man you know black dog rock and roll really get the the blood pumping man i think that here we have you know plant still at the top of his game on the yes. vocals um lyrics to top form and obviously uh you know jimmy page's riffs and um you know the bottom and uh, 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 John Paul Jones' rhythm section, bring it all together. Definitely. Great choice. Going back to a little Beatles action here, uh, solo stuff. Plastic Ono Band mm-hmm. by Mr. Lennon. Eight in the UK, six in the US. Of course, we got Mother. We got Working Class Hero. Really good album. Um, not sure it's my favorite of his, but I picked it here because, you know, objectively, it's mm-hmm. the best album. But I actually prefer... Uh, Imagine. Yeah, I I prefer Plastic Ono Band. That's my favorite from from Lennon. Um, But uh, yeah, you can't go wrong with either of them. And I just think the rawness of this record uh, really stands the test of time. Can even be a bit uncomfortable at points to listen to, but that's the design right there. That's exactly right. uh, Like that pick right there, Dad. And I'm going now. We got two choices left. That's right. I'm going, uh, gentlemen, you picked David Bowie. It was tough. Which am I going to land on? But I landed on Station to Station. His 10th record, man. Uh, went to three in the U.S. and uh, was his highest charting album in the U.S. until 2013. So that might, might surprise some people. S- surprises um, me. You know, you uh, it's it, the the backstory of this one. We have a full review. Yeah, you got to go watch the review. It, it involves some cocaine, some milk, some jalapenos. <laughs> And a witch that Jimmy Page sent. And I mean, what a teaser that is. Dude, I know. And he doesn't even remember recording a lot of yeah, this. That's um, but I mean, the title track, which opens the album off, uh, you know, speaking of Marquee Moon earlier, just for 10 minutes, it's just so epic. I love it. Uh, Wild is the Wind is another favorite. The TVC 1-5 is uh, great. Uh, Golden Years. I mean, the the every song on this is really, really strong. So um, shout out to David Bowie, man. Do you like this album better than Ziggy? Um, it, it's tough. It, it's really what I'm in the mood for, right. I guess. At the I was time. just curious. Um, you know, if I had to choose, I still might lean Ziggy slightly, but uh, you know, it, it's it's on the day. It's on so the I could have left Ziggy on the board a lot longer because a lot of this is strategic. Getting the albums you want, <laughs> not necessarily in what order you want them. All right, I'm gonna go my ninth pick. It's gonna surprise some people. This album is fantastic, start to finish. I listened to it again, and I'm like, yeah, man, it's fantastic. Mr. William Joel, you might know him as Billy. The Stranger, his fifth studio album. album. And kind of like uh, Springsteen, he was sort of recording for his life mm-hmm. here. Um, he hadn't had a lot of hits. You know, Piano Man, that was it. And that was three years prior. But you've got his best-selling album, 
Uh, his last album had only went to 122. Mm-hmm. You got moving out. You got the strange. You got just the way you are. Scenes from an Italian restaurant. Yeah, maybe my a, favorite. It's just so good. Vienna, only the good die young. She's mm-hmm. always a woman. Guys, this Dang. is nine songs. This song, this album is ab. <laughs> absolutely loaded and you, I could have put it higher no man that's the thing too with pretty much all these albums that yeah, we've done I mean, it's, it's like every there's they're all killer no filter there's which, another top 10 list that we oh, can make yeah. after picking the stuff that we didn't pick no a hundred percent so uh, I'm gonna close it off with a, an album that sometimes actually appears on 80s list but it was indeed released yes, no, originally no. December 1979 in the UK so that's where we're going with it was released January in 1980 in the States here but it's The Clash's London Calling, their best record, uh, though I do quite enjoy their uh, debut, um, self-titled as well. But, uh, of course, you have the title track, uh, one of my favorite Clash songs, and I'm not down, uh, Death or Glory, Lost in the Supermarket, Spanish Bombs, the iconic Train in Vain. Uh, it shows not only that uh, the, the Clash were, you know, just punk rockers, right. but they could just develop into so many different types of genres, so the experimentation on this is uh, fantastic, especially as a double. And I love this album, and I think it might might share the uh, honor of uh, being, or might have the honor of being, the greatest album that we have not actually done a review or reaction. No, to. yeah, it's it's up there. We it's it's long overdue. It's long overdue. <laughs> My last pick, and I said this on the '60s. If you watch that one, the tenth pick's kind of the hardest because it's like I only got one more. Who yeah. am I going to give this last spot? I almost gave it to Springsteen's "Darkness on the Edge of Town" because that album is highly underrated. But I'm going to go with. Uh, a band that I think is good, not great, but their singles are great. But this album is by far mm. their best album to me. Queen, A Night at the Opera. Yep. Four studio album. It's not just all about Bohemian Rhapsody, yep. right? You got 39. You got the Prophet song. Prophet song is incredibly consistent. Fantastic. No, man. Uh, and you even, there's just a lot of fun on this record, too, with uh, I'm in love with my, my car. car. Yeah, uh, exactly. And, you know, just uh, even like Seaside Rendezvous, yeah, which that's... isn't like a fate. Like, no, I've grown it, to like it the more I. It, the album really works on a front to back listen. It really does. And it's true to its name, definitely has a bit of a theatrical oh, yeah. quality to it, which, uh, you know, we would kind of expect with, uh, with Queen. Yeah, and, and they're so. going to build on that in a day at the races and, and those sorts of things, too. So. Yeah, I mean, just just an unbelievable decade. Right? Oh, yeah, I, I think you could um, easily argue it's the best decade in, in music yeah. history. Just with, uh, yeah, you still had the the groups from a lot of the groups from the seventies still firing on those, from the sixties. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then some bands that are going to really take off in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, are 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 here. You know, towards mm-hmm. the latter part of the seventies. So I think it might have the most diversity yep. too. Coming in and then you get in the disco era and you get no you know, definitely. Uh, I I think yeah you you got punk in post punk you know some new wave stuff uh, you know soul uh, you know rock R and B just every everything everything rock and rolling man. So uh, this was a very tough list but a very uh, a fun video to make and of course like we said we want to know who you think won the draft and also let us know your favorites from the decade. So many great albums that just uh, you know didn't just are on the outside looking in. Exactly. Check out below. I'll have links for everything else that uh, that we reacted to or reviewed all of these albums most of them in the uh, in the description below also go back and check out year by year of the 70s if you haven't yet see what we picked there and if you'd like to support us anyway check out the patreon link below the patreon link on the end screen we greatly appreciate it and you can go back and and watch some uh, patreon only uh, exclusive content on some stuff of these albums. yeah some some listening parties and all that good stuff but uh until next time y'all we'll see you next week as we uh do the 80s right. uh so that that should be fun as well so until next time thanks for watching happy listening and we will see you